Well, hello and welcome to another Feel the Fire Live broadcast on a Sunday evening. Glad to have you with me tonight. We give God praise again in spite of, man, I'll tell you, the enemy is always trying to hinder in some way. And now we have this pollen we have to deal with. And I pray tonight that we get, God gives us victory over the pollen. Amen. In spite of it all, we're going to go forth in Jesus' name because, you know, it has a way of just affecting your eyes, affecting your, your sinuses and everything else. But nevertheless, we are victorious in spite of. So we're not going to let anything hinder us and God's going to be glorified. So we pray right now victory over every situation. We pray victory over every assignment of the enemy that will try to hinder us. And Father, we pray tonight that your word go forth with clarity, your word go forth with power, and God, that the healing power of God will be released as we speak tonight. You be glorified. We bind up spirits of distraction, spirits of doubt, unbelief. We come against it now. In Jesus' name, you be glorified. So we thank the Lord again and again. So welcome again to another Feel the Fire Live Sunday night version of Feeling the Fire Live because we believe that the word of the Lord is fire. Hallelujah. When you feel it live, Amen. It changes your life. So the word of God is what we got to put in high priority. And we thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit. And welcome again, YouTube audience. Welcome again, Harvest Center family and all people from all around the world. And let's keep ourselves focused on God. There's a lot of things that could distract us, a lot of things that could get our attention, but we've got to stay focused on the things of God. And above all, focus on the word of God, being led by the spirit of God. Because folks, I want you to know we are in the final final hours of of the age of grace i'm talking about jesus christ being soon to return and i want you to know the enemies he's messing but god's still blessing amen so if you're in a fight if you're in an opposition if you're under attack i want you to know the reason that you're under attack is because satan hates you getting the word of god he hates you getting the true word of god the revealed truth because persecution and opposition comes because of the word did jesus say that in the in, in one of his one of his teachings that whenever we start to get the word then opposition is going to come and i want you to know folks i mean opposition has been coming against me since i've been putting out these healing scriptures been putting out these youtube uh the, the healing scriptures over our, our live stream enemies been hitting from side to side but nevertheless we're not going to stop and we're going to press forward like never before because we have victory already in Jesus name. So tonight we're going to go back into our teaching concerning divine healing, because I do believe that there's a healing wave present. There's a healing move taking place. And I believe it's on the increase. And I believe the more we teach, the more we minister, the more we, when we explain the healing process of God, the healing ministry of God, the more we're going to see healing manifested. Why? Because I believe God heals through his word. I said he heals through his word. Didn't he say that in Psalms 107 verse 20? He sent his word to heal us and to deliver us from destruction. So if we're going to experience healing, we've got to get the healing word. Amen. So tonight we were, we're going we're gonna to look into the, from the subject. We're going to teach from the subject, hindrances to healing. In our last subject, in our, our last session, we talked about hindrance to hindrances to the move of God because I want you to know the move of God and healing are synonymous because when there's a healing wave that's a move of God so we're going to stay right in between these two thoughts the move of God and the healing wave amen because when we talk about the move of God we're talking about a wave of divine healing. And I believe there's a mighty wave of healing coming, folks. There's an increase that's about to hit planet Earth like we've never seen it before. But don't you know, waves usually come in gradual. Rage, waves usually come in kind of small. They come in, they come in kind of slow. And all of a sudden, those waves build until they become, they become uh, waves that are, are, could be tsunamis, amen, that could reach as high as a 30-story building, amen. So I believe there's a, way, uh, there's a tsunami of healing on the horizon amen but i want you to know the word of god's going to bring it and as we establish atmospheres of faith i believe god's people are going to receive their divine healing like never before because i want you to know healing and deliverance is still the children's bread that's why the devil fights it that's why he don't want us to teach on this but we declare because when the healing wave comes it's a sign that the kingdom of heaven has come to earth the kingdom of god is within us the kingdom of heaven is manifested when we see demonstrations of God's power. Amen. So when we see healing manifest, we see miracles manifest, we see, we see amputated limbs restored. 
That's a manifestation of the kingdom of heaven on the earth. And it comes through God's healing power. God always demonstrates his power by healing people. Amen. Causing miracles, signs and wonders to happen. And we believe that we're on the brink. We're on the, on the forefront of a mighty healing wave of the Holy Ghost. Healing and deliverance go together. I said healing and deliverance go together because when, when, when demons are cast out, sickness has to leave because many of the sicknesses will not, will not go away, will not be healed until the evil spirits are, are, are cast out. And this is what we're going to look at tonight. In our last session, we looked at some areas that when things are present, things that are present, that could hinder healing and hinder the move of God. When certain things are present, it could be a hindrance to the move of God. And we mentioned the fact that some of those things that are present that could hinder the, 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 the hinder our healing and hinder the move of God are number one, sin. Whenever sin is present, when sin is not dealt with, sin being present can hinder the move, hinder the move of God and can hinder us from receiving, receiving our healing. What am I saying? I'm saying if you got a, a practice of sin going on in your life, a practice of disobedience going on in your life, when I say a reoccurring, reoccurring sin, Amen. When sin, sin is practiced, sin is continuous, that can hinder the healing process. Why? Because Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, says your sin has separated you from your God. It's not that God can't hear. It's not that he don't have the power. But when there's sin there, sin brings a separation between us and God. So we've got to get rid of the sin life. Amen. You got to get rid of the sin life. You got to get rid of the, the uh, whatever sin it is in your life. You got to get rid of it by repentance. Acknowledge and repentance. Confess and forsake the sin. Amen. Uh, Proverbs uh, 28, 13 say, He that confesses, he that covers his sin will not prosper, but he that confesses and forsakes his sin will have mercy. And a lot of that mercy is demonstrated in the healing power of God. Amen. Why? Because when sin is present, it hinders our healing. Also, we mentioned the fact that when doubt and unbelief is present, you see, because when some things are present, it could hinder us. But also when some things are not present, it can also hinder us. So we're looking at it from these two, two standpoints. In our last session, we looked at the things that can, can be present. And tonight, we're going to look at the things that can be absent or not present. The things that are absent, that there are some things that are absent and not present can also hinder us from being healed, hinder us from being delivered. Also, when, when, in a reference to things that are present, we, we mentioned unbelief, doubt, and unbelief. Jesus said, believe when you pray. He said, believe when you pray. You shall, you, you shall receive when you pray. You shall have them. In other words, when we pray, we got to have faith. When we pray, we got to believe. Amen? So unbelief, doubt. You, you, you must believe that God will heal you tonight. You must believe that God will heal you. Know that he can, but believe that he will. Amen. And I want you to know he's the God of the now. Why? Because he says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Not will be, not was, but I am. In other words, God is healing right now. Amen. You got to believe that. You must not doubt it. You must believe it. You must speak it. You Somebody need to say, God will heal me now. Come on, come on, say it. God will heal me now. Come on, say it again. God will heal me now. Why? Because unbelief and doubt Whenever it, those things are present, it could hinder the healing of the body. Amen. Also, we mentioned the fact that when fear is present, well, if you're fearful of anything, you're fearful of anything, whether it's whether it's COVID, whether it's whether it's uh, racism, or whether it's whatever it is you're afraid of, fear being present can hinder healing. Amen. Doesn't matter if you're afraid of the dark. Now that matters. It doesn't matter if you're afraid to fly on an airplane. Now doesn't matter if you're afraid of the dog or afraid of the cat. Whatever it is, if you got any kind of fear, hinder you from being healed. I said it'll hinder you from being healed. Why? Because fear is the absence of faith. You can't have fear and faith working together. Amen. Fear and faith can't live in the same house. Amen. You got to kick the fear out, and then faith will come in, and then healing will come. Whenever fear is present healing is hindered. Whenever fear is present, healing is hindered because he's not giving us the spirit of fear, but what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Come on, somebody need to say, I got power, I got love, I got a sound mind, and I cast out fear tonight. Amen? Because when fear is present, fear also hinders the healing process. When there's disobedience, when disobedience is present, you disobeying God, God's saying go to the right, you going to the left, God's saying do this, you want to do something else, disobedience whenever disobedience is present 
healing is hindered. Whenever disobedience is present, deliverance is hindered. Whenever disobedience is present, the presence and the glory of God, the power of God is absent. Amen? Disobedience being present will always hinder the move of the Holy Spirit, will, move, will hinder the healing power and the healing wave of the Holy Ghost. Also, we mentioned when wrong priorities are present. When wrong priorities are present, in other words, your priorities are out of place. And I use the analogy in the, in the last session that a lot of people sometimes, they, 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 they're, they're concerned about how long the service is and how loud the music is. And this service is just too long. No, no, it's not the problem with the service being too long, my sister, my brother. It's not the problem. The problem's not there. The problem's with your priority. You got something else as a priority over the things of God. You get your priorities in accord with God you won't worry about what, how long the service is. No, you've either got people as priority. You either got you either got food. You either got yourself. You either got your relaxation, your rest, or whatever it is. Something else is a priority, and you won't blame it on the service or, or, or on the minister that's that's conducting the service. No, it's not the, it's not the length of the service that's out of place. Our priorities get out of place, and when we when we prioritize God, you don't look at your watch. You don't worry about what time it is. You got to get the priorities in, in order. But when, when, when wrong priorities are in place, it hinders the move of God. Why? Because you're ready to go. You think it's time to leave. Why? You're not concerned about what God might still want to do. Amen. And, and what he could want to do could be heal you. Amen. So you get your priorities in place. Amen. You put God first, keep him first, then healing could come. But wrong priorities being present can hinder the healing power of God. We mentioned also disobedience. So let's hook up where we're going to go tonight. There's some other things I could review from the last session, but let's let's go with where we're going to go tonight. Okay, now, now tonight we're going to look at things that are absent. When things that are, certain things that are missing, that could hinder the healing power of God or can hinder your healing. And with certain, certain things can be present, can hinder, Certain things that are missing or absent can hinder. Tonight, we're going to look at the things that are absent, the things that are missing, the things that are lacking, the things that are lacking. Thir certain things that are lacking can hinder us from being healed. So let's start off with number one. Let's go back to faith again. Okay, and I'm going I'm to phrase it from this way tonight. I'm not just going to say faith, uh, faith, the, uh, the, uh, the lack of faith, but the lack of faith to be healed. You see, because you can have faith to believe God for something else. You can have faith to believe God to be saved. You can have faith to believe God for, for, for a house or believe God for another job or for, believe God for whatever you want. You can have faith to believe him for something else. But you got to have faith to be healed. Amen. Amen. You got to have faith to be healed. So, so a lack of faith to be healed is a hindrance to healing and deliverance. Okay, now I'm going to read here from Acts chapter 14, the book of Acts chapter 14, a situation where the Apostle Paul and Barnabas, when they were at Lystra, let's look at this, let Acts chapter 14, and let's start with verse 8. We're talking about the lack of faith to be healed, the lack of faith to be healed. Okay, he said, there was a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb, who never walked. The same heard Paul speak. You need to underline that. The same heard Paul speak. Who steadfastly beholding him, perceiving, uh, who, who heard, Paul, heard Paul speak, perceiving that he had faith to be healed. In other words, the man heard Paul speak and, and, and Paul steadfastly beholding him, others, Paul kept looking at this guy, and, 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 and Paul said, perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Now, he had faith not to get a new car. He didn't have faith not to be saved. This man had faith to be healed. Paul was looking at him while he was preaching. You know, every now and then, you, you're ministering. The Holy Ghost will keep drawing you to a certain person. I know it happens to me a lot. In other words, you keep, you keep, like you keep focusing back on that certain individual. Either that individual has faith to be healed, or that uh, that person is desiring something from the Lord. Okay, so in this case, Paul perceived the Bible said, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Okay, so now Paul perceived 
the Holy Ghost revealed Paul, or we could say Paul discerned that this man had faith to be healed. You see, that's why in ministry, we got to have the Holy Ghost, that ability to discern. A amen. A and Paul perceived that the man had faith to be healed. So when Paul perceived that he had faith to be healed, Paul spake to him the words that would bring about his healing even the more. And I believe he'd already been talking to, him, talking to him about healing. Why? Because if he, if the, if the man had faith to be healed, he also must have already heard that God could heal him and, and cause him to walk. Amen. So he, he perceived he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. In other words, the man had faith to be healed. He believed that he had faith to be healed. So when Paul spake and said, stand up on your feet, the power and the virtue of God went into his body. The Bible says, and he leaped and he walked. In other words, the guy jumped up and walked, just jumped up and started walking. Never walked from his mother's womb, never walked in his life. And all of a sudden, because he had faith to be healed, he leaped and he walked. Now, I want you to see he had faith to be healed because he heard Paul speak. He heard Paul speak. He heard Paul teach and preach about healing and he received that. An atmosphere of faith was created around him. And Paul looked at him and Paul just spoke and says, stand up on thy feet. And when he said that, what he heard Faith went to another level. And I believe this was the gift of faith in operation. Because I believe faith to be healed is the operation of the gift of faith. I believe it's that supernatural faith that Paul spoke about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You see, there's three power gifts. There's, there's, there's gifts of healing, there's gift of faith, and there's working of miracles. And I believe here, in this situation, this man experienced all three power gifts. He heard the word. He had to be healed before he could jump up. Amen. Hallelujah. And it was nothing but a miracle that he got healed and he, and he jumped up and started walking. And it took faith to be healed, which is, I believe, the gift of faith that operated when Paul spoke and told the man, stand upon his feet. You see, but the man had to have faith to be healed. How do you get faith to be healed? You have to hear the word concerning your healing. You have to hear the word concerning God will give you sight back in your eyes. You have to hear the word because God healed blind bottom ears. You got to believe that God will heal you of that cancer. God will heal you of that blood disorder. God will heal you of that lupus. You got to believe that God will heal you of whatever condition you have in your body. I'm speaking this tonight because God can heal you of whatever condition you have in your body. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You, you believe that, that you too will have faith to be healed. Glory to God. Just like this man. You see, but if there's, a, if there's a lack of faith to be healed, we will not receive our healing. You see, because there are a lot of believers sitting under a lot of leaders, sitting in a lot of churches, and they're not hearing the word concerning healing and deliverance. This is why the church is such a, has such a great need of the ministry of deliverance there's a such great need of the ministry of healing in the church why because you got believers sitting under leaders that don't teach about healing and know and know very little about deliverance glory to god you see because the only way you can get faith to be delivered you got to hear the ministry or you got to hear the deliverance message you got to hear that jesus said we should cast out demons you got to hear that jesus said we should lay hands on the sick and they shall recover you see, and you see that this is one of the problems. This is why I believe many believers are dying prematurely. Many believers are suffering with torments in their body. Why? Because they're sitting on the leaders that won't tell them. And, and they are not hearing the healing word that will bring about their deliverance and their healing. You see, in order to get faith to be healed, you have to hear the healing word. Amen. You got to hear a word of deliverance. And if you're, in order to have faith to be delivered, you got to have, you got to hear that deliverance word. Amen. And you see, this man had faith to be healed. Okay. So my number one tonight is a lack of faith to be healed. If you're lacking faith to be healed by not hearing, and we know faith comes by hearing, and whatever word you hear, you have faith in that area. Amen. 
The healing word is the sword of the spirit against sickness and disease. But you got to hear it. Hearing the healing word gives us faith to be healed. But if that's lacking, you'll lack getting your healing. A lack of hearing the healing word will bring a lack of faith to be healed. But when you hear the word concerning healing, it generates faith and we can perceive and discern that you have faith to be healed. And then when that's, that healing word is spoken, glory to God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, you will respond. Why? Because God will release his power into this man's body and he was healed. Now, in this story here in Acts chapter 14, I want us to pay attention to something here because, you see, with this healing word, I'm talking to ministers, I'm talking to believers, that God's going to use mightily, hallelujah. You see, because we've got to watch out that we don't take God's glory. Because there are going to be miracles, there are going to be signs, there are going to be amputated limbs restored. And if we're not careful, the enemy will cause us to get into pride. When people start to exalt us and give us God's glory, we got to say, hey, wait a minute. It's not my power that did this. It was the power of God. Give the glory to God. Paul then had to deal with this. And Paul and Barnabas set an example for us just what we are to do when people want to exalt us. Amen. Okay, look at that. It, it, uh, verse 11, Acts 14, 11. When the people saw what, was, what, what, what Paul had done. See, they thought Paul did it. They saw what Paul had done. You see, you see you, they, they thought that it was done by Paul. But when they saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices saying in, their, in the speech of Lycordia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Then they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. Okay, now they raised these, they lift these guys up as gods. They thought Paul was a god. They thought Barnabas was a god. And, and, and they exalted them because they didn't know no better. Amen. They thought that Paul did the miracle. They thought that Barnabas was, was, was responsible for the man's healing. But Paul had to correct him. See, Paul, they set a good example for us. Don't take God's glory for yourself. Amen. It doesn't matter what happened. Give God the glory. Tell the people to praise God. Amen. Don't let them praise you. Amen. When they say, oh, brother, brother, so-and-so, I, I thank you for, 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 for healing my body. You, you say, no, I didn't do nothing. You give God the praise. I don't have no healing power. It all comes from God. Amen. So you got to watch out for this because the enemy will set you up. Amen. So you got to watch out for that pride. Okay. When Paul heard this, I'm looking at verse 14. When the, when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they rent their clothes. In other words, they got angry. I mean, they, they rent their clothes. They like tore their garments. I mean, they didn't go down to the tuxedo rental place and rent no clothes. No, rent means tear. They ripped their garments as a sign of, 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 of anguish and, and a sign of, of, of contempt. They rent their clothes and ran among the people crying out saying, Sirs, why do, why do ye these things? For we are also men with like passion with you. And we preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all things that are therein. Okay. Now Paul told them, said, don't, don't exalt us. Don't give us the praise. Give the praise to God. We're just telling you to turn from these idols, to turn away from Jupiter. Because Jupiter can't heal nobody. Amen. In other words, he was trying to point them in the direction of the true and living God and not to point them to themselves. You see, they could easily take the credit. Why? Because the people thought they did the miracle. Folks, we've got to be careful in the days that are ahead that we don't take and receive God's glory, but we got to direct the people to give God the praise. Paul and, and Barnabas set the example for us. But because the man had faith to be healed, he heard the healing word and he had faith to be healed. The Bible says when Paul spoke, the man stood upon his feet and leaped and he started walking. Boy, that, that blew the people away. But they thought that Paul had the power and it was Paul's power that healed the man. No, we got to always point them to God. Always give God the glory. Hallelujah. If I don't say it and you and you bring giving me praise, I'm gonna point up. You know what I mean. Hallelujah. Give give God the glory. Don't look at me. Amen. So you gotta look out. Gotta watch out for that. Because the enemy will get us into pride. And if we get into pride, start taking God's glory for ourselves, then God's gonna have to call us home early. Amen. And we will may not finish out our assignment. Amen. So we gotta stay humble, always give God the praise. But a lack of faith to be healed is a hindrance to healing. 
Okay. Also, we get emphasize the fact. I want to put an emphasis on. We're talking about the things that are lacking, things that are missing, that will cause a hindrance to healing. Okay. My number two tonight is a lack of prayer. Now, I know we hear a lot about we should pray, but just basically, oh, lack of prayer. A amen. In other words, you don't have a prayer life. You don't pray. You don't pray consistently. A lack of prayer. In other words, you don't you don't dwell in that secret place. Are you dwell in the secret place only when you're in trouble? Only when you have a drastic need that you're going to cry out to God? No, a lack of prayer. Things that are lacking that hinder God's healing power. Number one, we mentioned a lack of faith to be healed. Number two tonight is a lack of prayer. He said in Jeremiah 33, uh, Jeremiah 33 at verse verse 3, he said, call unto me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. In other words, how can he show us great and mighty things if we don't call? That's why he said, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. In other words, a lack of prayer. And I will put an emphasis on a lack of consistent prayer. We got to stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in prayer. Amen. A lack of prayer, a lack of prayer will bring about a, 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 a hindrance to the healing, healing power of God. Now, God dwells in the secret place. Psalms 91 tells us he that dwells in the secret place. Where's the secret place? It's the place of prayer. A lack of spending time in the secret place with God. Hinder your, hinder your healing power, hinder God's healing power from working. Amen. So, so we got to be his house of prayer. Your life must be his house of prayer. Your temple must be his house of prayer. You got to make that declaration. You got to do it. You got to carry it out because a lack of spending time in the presence of God. I don't know why, because in the presence of God, that's the secret place. In the presence of God is where his wings are. Amen. Psalms 91 says, under his wings shall we trust. Psalms 91, 4. Then he said in Malachi 4, 2, the son of righteousness will arise with healing. Where's the healing? In his wings. Malachi 4, 2. So if I'm in the secret place, if I'm in the place of prayer, I am in the place where healing takes place. So I got to spend time. We've got to spend time. You've got to spend time. We've all got to spend more time in the presence of God, in the secret place of prayer. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Because a lack of prayer hinders healing. Also, a lack of consistency. I put an emphasis on a lack of consistency. Now, you see, because a lot of times, some folks, they pray, or they come up in a prayer line, they get prayed for, and, 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 and nothing happens. They still got the sickness, and, and they give up. They just go back, and they say, well, God didn't heal me. I guess he don't want to heal me. No. Consistency. You got to have consistency in prayer. You got to have cons consistency. In other words, that's hunger. That's desire. That's thirst. That's God. I know you have it. I'm not giving up till I get it. Hey, amen. Amen. This is this consistency is, is so vital. Amen. I've listened to the recording. I've listened to the healing scriptures. And I'm going to keep on listening until I get my breakthrough. Why? Because consistency in prayer, consistency in pursuing God for what we need brings about his divine healing power. The, the woman the woman with the unjust judge in Luke chapter 18. You, many of you have read it. If you don't, haven't read it, you need to. Luke 18, 1 through 7. The woman with the unjust judge, she went to the judge and, and she told the judge, avenge me of my adversary. The judge just ignored her for a while, but the woman kept coming back. The woman kept coming back. The woman kept coming back until the judge said, wait a minute, let me get rid of this woman. Let me give her what she wants. Why? Because she was consistent persistent in prayer you got to be consistent amen a lack of persistence a lack of consistency will hinder the healing power of god okay Let, let's look at it from a, let's look at it from another passage uh i'm gonna go to uh luke chapter 11 luke chapter 11 and let's look at uh let's start with verse 5 luke 11 and verse number five let's back up here uh, Luke 11 thank God for the Holy Ghost thank God for the word of the Lord tonight hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord forever okay Luke chapter 11 and let's start with verse uh, 5 Luke 11 5 okay talking about persistency a lack of consistency a lack of persistence will hinder the healing power of God in other words don't stop till you get it Keep listening till you get it. Hey, amen. Amen. You see, because God will test our faith. You see, because if God just healed you 
when you when you prayed one time, if he his healed, you pray one time, get healed just like that. That's not faith. Faith is not established like that. Faith is demonstrated by consistency. You see, because that's why God God will test us to see how much faith we got or what kind of faith we got. In other words, He's not going. Most cases, He won't heal you on the first prayer. Most cases, He won't. He may not heal you on the first laying on of hands, and He could now. But a lot of times, God will test our consistency. He'll test our hunger. He'll test our want to. Glory to God. Do you really want to? Hallelujah. Uh, amen. You, you got to have that want to. You got to have that desire. And you demonstrate it by keep coming back. It demonstrated by consistency. Now, Luke chapter 11 and verse 5. Jesus said, and he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and shall say unto him at midnight and say, say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. In other words, suppose you go to your friend's house at midnight, that's 12 o'clock, late at night and say i need some bread could you lend me some bread okay and verse six for a friend of mine is in a journey and has come to me and i have nothing to set before him and he from within shall shall answer and say trouble me not the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed and i cannot arise and give unto thee he said i say unto you though he will not arise and give unto him because he is his friend yet because of his importunity he will arise and give him as many as he needed okay so now here we got another situation of persistence uh, another example of persistence here this guy goes to his friend's house he says i got a neighbor that's case a friend that just came from out of town and i don't have no food to give him could you give me three loaves of bread Okay, the guy does not go away. He stays right there. The Bible says, because of his importunity. That, now, that word importunity means persistence. It means to annoy someone. You ever had somebody just annoyed you? <laughs> I mean, it's like, a, I call it like a little barking dog. Yep, yep, yep. It just won't go away. Just annoying. In other words, the man was persistent. That word importunity means persistence. Because of this guy was persistent. He would not go away. He said, I know you got some bread in there. And I know we're friends. And I'm not leaving. Tell you, give me some bread. The guy, and Jesus said, the man will give him because of his importunity. In other words, you got to be, do you have any importunity tonight about your healing? You got to ask God, God, Father, give me some importunity. Give me some persistence. Help me to be consistent in prayer. Help me to be consistent in listening to the healing word. You see, because of his persistence, his friend gave him the three loaves. What am I saying? I'm saying a lack of persistence and a lack of importunity. And that word importunity means to be persistent and to not give up until you get it. Just like that woman with the unjust judge. A lack of consistency will hinder the healing power of God. Got to be consistent. Because let me tell you something. He can and he will heal you. But you got to be consistent. You got to have faith to be healed and you got to be consistent in pursuing that healing. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next one that we're going to look at tonight uh, is a lack of repentance, a lack of repentance, because a lot of times, unless we repent, repentance moves the sin out of the way. Amen. Like I told you in the first session, when sin is present, it hinders healing, but a lack of repentance, we're talking about the things that we can lack, things that we can not have operating that can hinder our healing, a lack of true repentance true repentance means to acknowledge recognize that sin is there and make a decision you're going to confess it and then you're going to forsake it proverbs 28 13 he that covers his sin shall not prosper but he that confesses and forsake shall have mercy see a lack of repentance a lack of true repentance and a lot of times true repentance just means repenting from fear because fear is sin a lot of times true repentance just means re repenting from unbelief and doubt because unbelief and doubt is sin. Uh, a lot of times true repentance could just mean uh, 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 repenting uh, uh, from rebellion, resisting God. A amen. Because rebellion is sin. Amen. The Bible says that's like the sin of witchcraft. Amen. And you see, because a lot of times certain things that are sinful in our lives, we don't see it as sin. Amen. But whenever we're disobedient, whenever we're rebellious, whenever we're unforgiving, 
Amen. Hallelujah. Whenever you are not forgiven somebody for something they did, you know, that's sin. And you got to repent of it because a lack of repentance, confess it and forsake it. Get rid of the sin. Get rid of the uncleanness. Get rid of the pornography. Get rid of the sexual sin. Whatever it is, repent. Confess it. Because a lack of true repentance will hinder our healing. Okay, okay, the next one, the next one we want to share, share with you tonight. You see, because, you see, you have, we have to, if I find out why a thing is broke, then I can fix it. You see, because you, we got to find out why something is not working. If I'm not getting my healing, I got to find out why I'm not getting it. Amen. You see, because before I can fix a problem, I got to find out why it's broke. Amen. Once you find out why the thing is broken, then you can go at the root cause to fix it. Amen. And I, and I want you to know a lot of our bodies are the same way. If we can find out why healing is not coming, why healing has not happened, then we can do the things that can bring about our healing. Okay. The next one I want to share with you tonight, that's lacking, that could be lacking. Why our healing is being hindered, hindered is a lack of deliverance. A lack of deliverance. I said a lack of deliverance. Why? Because very few leaders are teaching and preaching deliverance. Very few leaders are teaching and preaching the casting out of evil spirits. Amen. Or the casting out of demons. Like Jesus said in my name, you should cast out demons. Amen. Because a lot of times before sickness and disease can be healed, deliverance has to take place. I said before sickness and disease can be healed, deliverance will have to take place. Now I'm going to go to Luke. Luke chapter 13 and I want to look at a couple of passages here, Luke chapter 13, because a lack of deliverance will produce a lack of healing. Because in many cases, before healing can come, evil spirits must be cast out. Okay, Luke chapter, Luke chapter 13 and verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, and she was bowed together and could no longer no wise lift up herself and when he, and when jesus saw her he called her on him and said unto her woman thou art loose from thine infirmity and he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified god the woman was bent over her body was di dis distorted in a bent over position because of a spirit of infirmity a spirit of infirmity is a spirit of weakness in the body any 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 area of weakness in your body is usually a spirit of infirmity there and that's an evil spirit when jesus rebuked the evil spirit and i, and I see here that jesus laid his hands on her, on her and the demon left glory to god he just laid his hands on her and the demon had to take a hike amen when he laid his hands on her the bible says she was made straight that means the spirit of infirmity left what am i saying a lack of deliverance can hinder the healing power of God. Sometimes that evil spirit just need to be driven out. Sometimes that evil spirit just need to be confronted and driven out and the healing will come and the sickness will have to go. Why? Because a lack of deliverance. That's why Jesus, Jesus said in, in, in Matthew chapter 12, if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. In other words, when the kingdom of God comes, evil spirits have to go. When the kingdom of God manifests, demons have to flee. And I want you to know, a lack of deliverance. Oh, Lord, raise up more deliverance ministers. Raise up more deliverance disciples who can do the ministry of Jesus in casting on demons. Amen. Why? Because a lack of deliverance will also cause a lack of healing. A lack of deliverance will cause a lack of healing. Now, I want to go to Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the word of the Lord tonight. Matthew chapter 9. Let's look at let's look at another situation here. Matthew chapter 9. And let's look at verse number 32. We're talking about a lack of deliverance. Whenever there's a lack of deliverance, there's a lack, there could be a lack of healing. Amen. We're talking about hindrances to healing tonight. And hindrances to healing is also a hindrance to the move of God. We need a move of God. I'm hungry for the move of the Holy Ghost. God, pour out your spirit. Pour out your power. This world needs an intervention from on high. This world needs an intervention from the third heaven. This world needs an inhabitation from the third heaven of the power of God through the angels of God. I believe a revival is the only thing that's going to straighten this thing out. I believe a move of the Holy Ghost is going to get people's attention. 
They're going to turn many to repentance because folks, the primary purpose, hear what I'm going to say, the fire of God's on this here. The primary purpose of the healing wave is to bring about this harvest. The primary purpose of this healing, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the supernatural workings is to get the attention of people that they will turn away from themselves, turn away from other means and turn to God and bring in this last day harvest. Jesus Christ could come, set up his kingdom. Glory to God. Well, first, he's going to have to wipe this earth clean first. He's going to have to clean up this earth first. And then he's going to set up his kingdom on this earth. We're going to reign and rule with him. Because, but it's going to come through the healing wave of God. See, the miracles, the signs and wonders is so they might believe that Jesus is the Christ and that believing they can have life through his name. Hallelujah. John chapter 20 tells us that around verse 30, 31. He said, because we need a healing wave of the Holy Spirit. Okay. All right. Uh, not being led. Not, the next one is not being led. A lack of being led by the Spirit of God. A lack of being led. If you're taking notes, a lack of being led by the Spirit of God. We're talking about things that are lacking that can hinder healing. A lack of being led by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 14 says, as many of us are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You see, we got to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. And the way the Spirit of God leads us is through the Word of God. And the, and the Spirit of God will lead us in our personal life because a lot of times healing will come when we follow the instructions of the Holy Spirit. When we follow instructions of the Holy Spirit, God can bring about healing. But a lack of being led by the Spirit of God, you see, because in order to be led by the Spirit of God, you got to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You got to you got to know His voice, Amen. You can't say like some of these folks say all their life, something told me. No, you got to know the voice of the Holy Ghost. A lack of being led by the Spirit of God will hinder healing. You see, because the man born blind in John chapter nine, he had to follow the words of Jesus. The words of Jesus was the leading of the Holy Spirit in that man born, the man who was born blind in his life. The words of Jesus, he had to do what the Lord told him. And because he went and washed in the pool of Siloam, he came back with his sight. He came back seeing. But he, we have to be led by the Spirit of God. You see, because the Holy Ghost will tell you to go to a certain place. The Holy Ghost might tell you to go to a certain minister, a minister, a certain church, a certain place where the healing power is. And if we resist that, we could we could we could nullify our healing. We got to be led by the Spirit of God, folks. Don't be led by other people. Don't be led by your mind or your flesh. Be led by the Spirit of God. The only way that you can be led by the Spirit of God, you got to put the Word of God in you. Hallelujah. You got to have the Word working in you because the Spirit works through the Word. A lack of being led by the Spirit of God. Because healing comes when we obey the Holy Spirit. Healing is released when we can obey the Holy Spirit. But if we don't obey the Holy Ghost, healing can be hindered. We're talking about things that could be lacking that would hinder our healing. A lack of being led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 14, when the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you into all truth. If that Holy Ghost guides your life, folks, everything that you need, God's going to supply because you're going to be led by the Spirit of God. Okay, being led, a lack of being led by the Spirit of God can hinder the healing power of God. Okay, also, let's, let's add this one here to, to, to today. A lack of the proper diet. Did he say that? Why did he have to say that? Yeah, I had to say that. And here it comes again. A lack of the proper diet. In other words, when we just don't eat the food that God has destined for us to put into our bodies, it could hinder healing. And it can also bring on sickness and disease. Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. And let's look at this here. Exodus 23, 22. And I'm going to read 22 right on to 25. A lack of the proper diet. Now, now I'm going I'm to qualify this scripture here. Verse 25 is what I'm after. But I'm going to show you that a lack of the proper diet can bring about sickness and disease. Okay. Uh, Exodus 23 verse 22 he said but if thou will obey his voice and do all that i speak unto thee then i will be an enemy to thine enemy and an adversary to thine adversary god says if you just obey me i'll be an enemy to that sickness and i'll be an adversary to that disease sickness and disease are our enemies and our adversary god said if you obey me 
your enemy will be my enemy. Glory to God. And if my enemy is God's enemy, God's going to take care of my enemies. Amen. And, and he says, for the angel, for mine angel shall go before thee and shall bring thee unto the Amorites, unto the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them. That's verse 24. Nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. In other words, he's saying, you got to get rid of the idols. Don't, don't fall into the trap of idol worship. Get rid of the evil altars in your life. Amen. There's evil altars of worship where you spend more time doing something, one thing than you do with the things of God. Amen. Then he says here in verse number 25, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. That's verse 25. Exodus 23, 25 says, He shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. The only way God can bless our bread and our water is if we eat according to God's dietary laws. If we eat the things that God says for us to eat and refuse to eat the things that he says us for us not to eat, then he will bless your bread and your water. But if we eat the way we want to eat, if we eat the way most of our family eats, he can't bless the bread and the water. We have to eat according to God's dietary laws. We have to eat things planted. We have to drink good water. Hey, amen. Nice. I have to say good water because all of this water that's coming out of these taps is not good. Hey, amen. Amen. We've got to drink alkaline water, water that's purified to the best of our ability and to our knowing. We've got to drink good water. We've got to eat what God tells us to eat. Then he'll bless our bread and our water. Then God will bless what we eat. And once he bless what we eat, the food becomes our medicine. Why? Because the food I eat is blessed. So the food I eat is not going to work against my body. The food I, I eat is going to heal my body and keep me healthy. Why? Because God's going to bless my food. But I have to eat the way God wants me to eat. I have to eat green vegetables. I have to eat fruit. I have to eat eat the things that, that come out of the earth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I said today, you better wash every vegetable. You better wash every fruit before you eat it because they got all these pesticides and chemicals. You better wash it real good as best you can. And one of the best ways to wash your vegetables is wash it with, with baking soda. Pour some baking soda on it, run some cold water over it, clean, out, clean all those pesticides off, then cook it or eat it raw, however you want to eat it. But you got to eat from the things of the earth then God will bless our bread and our water. So if my bread is blessed, if what I eat is blessed, my food becomes my medicine. And I won't need to depend on a prescription drug all my life. Why? Because my food is blessed by God and that's my medicine. Then he says, he says, then he says, what else he said there? Verse 25, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. In other words, some of our healing will come when we just change the way we eat. We just change our eating habits, a lack of proper diet. We're talking about things that are lacking. We don't eat right. We don't eat the, eat the food that God tells us to eat. In Deuteronomy chapter 14 and in the book of Leviticus, that told us not to eat those unclean things, not to eat those unclean meats. Amen. And, and told us that, that not to eat anything that, that's offered up to idols and all this stuff that's unclean that he describes as being unclean. And we eat as God tells us to eat. He says the herbs and, 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 the, and the plants of the earth are to be our food. You, you say you should, you should become a vegetarian. Well, you be what you do whatever the Holy Ghost tells you. I'm telling you, God says we should eat from the earth. Then he'll bless our bread and our water. And then he'll take sickness away from the midst of us. Can you say amen to that? That's the word of the Lord, folks. That's not Rufus chapter 5. Amen. That, that, that's, that's Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. He says, then I'll bless thy bread and thy water. Then I'll take sickness away from the midst of thee. But we have to eat the way God says for us to eat. Folks, let me tell you something. A lot of these diseases are not hereditary. We talk about diabetes is hereditary. High blood pressure is hereditary. No, it's not. What is hereditary is poor eating habits. We eat the same way our ancestors eat. So we bring a generational sickness in the family because we all eat the same way. Folks, 
we have to change this. It has to change with you. You have to make a decision. I'm going back to eating the way God wants me to eat. Because you got to develop it as a lifestyle. I'm talking about a lifestyle change. I'm not talking about a two-week diet. I'm talking about an all-day, eternal, long-as-you-live way of eating. Hallelujah. Sila. You see what you talk about Sila? Pause and think about what I just said. You want to be healed? You want to stay healthy? You got to eat right. A lack of proper diet will cause a hindrance to healing okay i'll give you one more tonight and i'll be done okay okay a lack of expectation glory to god boy we hammered this one in our service on last sunday a lack of expectation you see you gotta expect god to heal you you gotta expect god to heal you okay if you're wondering what i'm drinking here this is this is this is lemon juice apple cider vinegar and a little warm water good cleanser for the body does wonders for your system lemon cleans your kidneys amen hallelujah lemon juice cleans the kidneys amen and, and that apple cider vinegar uh jump starts the metabolism cleanses the blood hallelujah glory to god see i, I make a decision i'm not gonna eat the way my ancestors ate amen hallelujah i defy diabetes to run in my body in jesus name you see, because I want my I'm a, my bread and my water to be blessed. So I'm going to make some lifestyle changes. Amen. And that has to do with eating, exercise, hallelujah, drinking good water. Hallelujah. I can stay right there because this is so important. And if you're going to stay healed, you've got to continue to eat that way. When I talk about persistency, consistency, importunity, in other words, you got to keep going in that direction. You see, because if I want to stay healed, I can't just eat right for a while to get healed then go back to my old ways no that's backsliding you go back to backsliding the sickness will come back amen you so you got to stay on that path develop it as a lifestyle develop a plant-based diet as a lifestyle yes a plant-based diet that my my diet must be plant-based in other words the main thing on my plate gonna be plant-based Amen. And I'm not talking about rice and grits and pasta and all this stuff. I'm talking about green vegetables. I'm talking about fruit. I'm talking about plant-based. The most I will eat in a setting is, is plant-based or things planted. It's either going to be broccoli. It's either going to be cabbage. It's either going to be, oh, be kale. It's either going to be squash. It's either going to be uh, collard greens minus the ham hock and all this salty stuff. No, no. Get rid of that stuff. No. Just eat, eat, eat the pure vegetables. Amen. Hallelujah. Plant-based. Hallelujah. If I, if I eat, I got a big plate of cabbage. Amen. Big, big, big plate of cabbage and kale mixed together. I mean, I, I could eat a lot of that. Amen. Amen. Because it, it, it's, it's good for the body and it don't turn into sugar. Amen. Glory to God. See, so you got to, you got to eat that way. Amen. Hallelujah. Take a lesson. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God. I, I, I declare I, I, my life is not going to be cut short because of the way I eat. Amen. I'm going to do the things that are pleasing to God and then my bread, my water going to be blessed. Hallelujah. You do it for you. He's not a respecter of person. What he does for me, he'll do for you. Okay. Last one tonight. Okay. Uh, we're talking about things that we could be lacking that could hinder healing. The last one tonight we want to share with you is a lack of expectancy, a lack of expectation. Okay, Acts chapter, Acts chapter three, Acts chapter three, and verse two, Acts three two, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple to ask an alms. Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something. Notice, expecting to receive something. The man that was lame at the gate of the temple, he was expecting to receive something. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I not. But such as I have, give I unto thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his ankle bones received strength, and he leaping, stood upon his feet, stood, stood and walked, entered into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Why did he get healed? He got healed because he was expecting to receive something. A lack of expectation. Other words, you got to expect it. I expect him to do it. 
I expect him to do it. Oh, you got to say, I expect him to do it. You got to say, I expect him to do it. Why? The man was expecting, verse 5 says, he was expecting to receive something. A lot of time people go to church. A lot of time people come up in a prayer line, but they're not expecting to receive something. A lot of times folks come to church. They just come to church out of duty. They just come to church out of, out of this right thing to do, but they don't come expecting to receive something. You got to have an expectation. You got to expect God to heal you. I don't know about you, but I expect to be healed. Sickness in my body, I expect to be healed. I, why? Because I know he's a healer. I know his name is Jehovah Rapha. He said, if I call unto him, he'll show me great and mighty things that I do not know. I know he said he sent his word to heal me and to deliver me from destruction. Psalms 107 and verse 20. So I expect him to heal me. You got to expect him to heal you. And sometimes you got to say, I expect him to do it. You got to say, I expect him to do it. I don't care what the doctor says. I expect God to do it. A lack of expectancy. A lack of expectancy can hinder the healing process. Folks, you got to know it. You got to believe it. You got to declare it. And you got to expect it. Why? The lame man was expecting to receive something. He, did, he probably was expecting to receive some money. But he was expecting to receive something from Peter and John. He said, but Peter and John gave him what he needed. And that was the healing of his legs, the healing of his body. You got to expect to receive something. You come up to be prayed for you got to say in the name of jesus god i expect to be healed today i expect to be healed tonight when we pray because we're going to pray after the broadcast tonight and you got to expect him to heal you tonight why because he's still the i am you got to have an expectation a lack of expectation brings a hindrance to healing folks i believe these things are very vital if we're going to receive divine healing and if we're going to experience a healing move of God, a healing wave of God. We've got to have faith to be healed. We've got to have consistent faith. We've got to have deliverance if it's needed. If it's a demon behind it, the demon got to be cast out. We got to have consistent prayer. And folks, I believe we got to be led by the Spirit of God. We've got to have a proper diet we got to eat right and we got to have expectation i believe if we have these things if these things are lacking in your life let's put it in tonight let's 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 add these things to our life tonight and i believe we're going to see the glory and the power of god like we've never seen before in jesus name let's pray father i thank you right now for each one that has listened i pray right now by the power of the holy spirit god that the word of the lord go forth with clarity and power tonight and it will hit sickness and disease right where it lies. And it'll be demolished, eradicated, destroyed out of people's body. As I speak now, because you said by your stripes, we were healed. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for that one that has gotten a bad doctor's report, a cancer report. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed by the power of God. Cancer, leave that body now. Tumor, dissolve in that body now. In Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you. Come on, begin to thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Come on. Expect him to do it. Come on. You got to say, I expect him to do it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break the power of the spirit of diabetes right now off of the, off of the people's bodies in Jesus' name. Kidney disease. I destroy it now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Angels of healing. Arise with healing in your wings for the people of God tonight. In Jesus' name. Ah, Every hernia be dissolved right now. Ah, blood clots be dissolved in the brain right now. In the name of Jesus. Blurry eyes be destroyed right now. Come clear. In Jesus' name. Double vision be destroyed. In Jesus' name. Oh, Macular degeneration be destroyed. Black spots, floaters be gone. In Jesus' name. Every dark spirit right now be gone out of the out of the vision of the people of God. And I thank you, Father, for healing and deliverance in Jesus' name. Oh, we kind of done. Ha reboshikeri banate. Hele banastikeri. My friend, if you have believed God for healing tonight, apply these things to your life. Faith to be healed, because you've heard the word concerning healing. And I perceive. 
that many of you have faith to be healed now. Be healed in Jesus' name. And God's going to be glorified. Ah, retoko rabase. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. My friend, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, tonight is the night. Oh, my God. Just receive him right now. Repent of your sins. Say, Lord, forgive me. Come on, say, Lord, forgive me. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I receive him now as my Lord and my Savior to save me, to fill me with the Holy Ghost, and to use me for his glory. My friend, if you pray that prayer, the miracle of all miracles, you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of God. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Until the next broadcast, if you want to do something good to help this broadcast, share it. Just share it. Share it with somebody. Subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed to it. And, and, and send us a send us a message, send us some kind of a, a, a correspondence of if God has healed your body through this telecast. Amen. If God has healed you, see, because I believe God can heal at a distance. I don't have to be right there in the room with you. Amen. Jesus healed with his word. Hallelujah. He said his word to heal and to deliver from destruction. And I released the healing word tonight. And I believe many are going to be healed because of the word tonight. May the Lord bless you. If you want to sow what a sower does financially, go to our website, theharvestcenter.com. Follow the prompts there. You'll be sowing into some good ground. God will bless you. And long life and health will be yours. Follow these instructions. God will be glorified. Until the next broadcast, love you. Keep yourself strong. Stay with the word. Keep listening to the healing word. Healing will come. And God's going to be glorified. In Jesus' name.